Walter's popularity waned after the war ended. People stopped buying his books. One of the stories did get turned into a screenplay starring Rita, Rita, what? Rita Hayworth. But that was more an exception than a rule. Walter did his best to put, a brave put on a brave face, but there's no denying it bruised his ego. They didn't even put his name in the end credits. We put a down payment on a luxury rental apartment on 12th Avenue. Walter was, well, not a communist, that's for sure, but he was at least a socialist in his beliefs. Not that I can really tell the difference, mine. It was pretty fashionable among writers and artists back then. As the daughter of a hard-working miner, who died in the mine just a, the day before it was closed. Can't say I shared in its leftist ideals. Don't mean I, don't mean I think that the, okay. Don't mean I think that the Jews, Bolsh Bolsheviks, or that Stalin feller pose any threat to the American way of life. But I still consider communism to be nothing more than a fiction fueled by intellectuals on the east side who've hardly worked a day in their lives. Alright, lady. <laughs> we argued from time to time. Walt called me, or rather people who shared my way of thinking. You know, hypothetical people who probably exist somewhere. But basically myself personified for the purpose of his conversation. Philistines. Or Philistines? Said the Philistines' paradise is, is an easily swayed construction that only needed a good rub for the blinkers to fall off. But the Philistines' paradise ain't so bad. We lived in it while lived in it while we were in New, while we're in New York, in a way. We had a cozy we had a cozy rental apartment with an electric toaster, an electric iron. One of those automatic lemon squeezers. Sure, we paid for it all in installments. So what? I can say one thing for sure. It was much better. It was much. It was much better being in a boring, well-fed paradise than in some crumbling old barn with no central heating. Walter may have needed to hear the rustle of wheat for his inspiration. All I ever need. All I ever heard was the whispers of demons. What's up? I took her to bed. How's she looking? Seems alright, but I'm no doctor. She said it's the weather. You wanna head out? I don't even know anymore. Maybe we shouldn't leave her alone, you know? Oh, come on. She nearly broke her damn neck, Mick. But she didn't, did she? What else is there for us to do here? She gave me a haircut, though. She did? When did you get that done? You wouldn't have even noticed if I, if I hadn't said anything. But it's beautiful. Can we hit the road now? Fine, let's go. There's no way to turn back now. There never will be. It's so noisy inside my head. My thoughts are all murky. No. Scattered, even. I don't want to think. I want to act. But it feels like there's a glass wall in front of me, and I'm going to break it. December 24th. How could I have been so blind? December 24th, 1946. The day that divided my life into a before and after. That's the combination. The manuscript, or typescript to be more precise. Straw bull. 200 pages of yellowed, strange smelling paper. Inches of metal had been keeping me away from my destiny. And finally I held the book in my hands. It wouldn't be a work of Walt's if it didn't include some, pre some pretentious epigraph from John Milton. I don't know this poem, but it's like I said before, I don't read much. A sharp knock at the door interrupted me from enjoying the moment. It was Margaret, right on time. 
Sorry, but I only got a chicory root. But you know what? This'll do. Thanks for the milk. Oh, choke on it. Ain't it funny how nothing's changed? Excuse me? It's the living room, I mean. The Harris house. Uh, uh, your house, I suppose. Might be a little dustier than before, but that's about it. Double-crossing bitch. Walter and I were friends when we were kids, you know? We'd spend entire days here at Mrs. Harris's. Before Clarence passed away. Oh yeah, Loretta, long before that. But Clarence ended up being the best of us. I'm so proud of him. His purple heart and his bronze star. Use them to open your favorite ginger ale. Delivered with a letter from the president. Could you imagine? I think I saw a rat out on the porch. Yeah, I ran out of poison. Margaret takes a sip of her milk. So who's the fetching young couple you renting to? Oh, that's Walter's daughter Kelly and her fi fiancé. Get out of town. I'd love to meet her. Tell them to make sure they pay me a, come pay me a visit. So Walter still hasn't showed up? Oh, you don't see him here, do you? The sheriff came and spoke to me, Loretta. Bill's a good man, but I ain't told him about our situation. Not yet, anyway. What do you want, Margaret? It's weird. This ain't like him. What about his novel? The, manu the manuscript's upstairs, upstairs in his safe. He left it here? He told me they were sending him a check. What are you getting at? Is that why you decided to ruin my marriage? You ruined it yourself, Loretta. Walter's miserable around you. Don't you get it? You're the miserable one. What do you know about marriage? Now you're telling me just up and now you're telling me he just up and left, left me, left his novel, left his own daughter. He left for he left her a long time ago, Margaret. You think you're the first? You ever ask what happened to with Kelly's mother? Left a rot with tuberculosis, and Walter kindly paid for the funeral. Linda drank one too many of those radium drinks, and you know that. You know why we moved then? Because he wanted to finish his book. Quit being such a fool. Walter's always been a coward. One small problem's enough to make him turn, turn tail and run. I don't trust you, Loretta. Then get this through that ginger scalp of yours. Let's say you're right. Let's say his filthy lying ass is currently rotten in the well out in the yard. Rats slowly picking his bones clean and all that. A fate he'd totally deserve, by the way. Even if that were all true... It'd be your word against mine. Fuck. This place is freezing. Is it the room spinning? Is it the room spinning or is it just me? Should have called it quits at that last vodka, mar vodka martini. Yeah, okay. The last three vodka martinis. Lights on in the bathroom. Is the is still up? urgently need to take a leak. What a guy, huh? Spent your whole life trudging through bullshit just like the rest of them. But look at you now, standing in a tux as crisp as a new dollar bill. Wish my folks could see me now. Key. Hey, you in there? Let me in, would you? I really gotta go. Laura? Oh, for Christ's sakes. <coughs> Woodstock? A typewriter. Hasn't brought me money or fame. I ain't in the right state of mind to be dialing anybody. Even if I wanted to, the lines would have wouldn't be operating at this time of night. Probably gonna regret this. 
Loretta ain't giving me any other options. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Much better. The hell's calling at this time of night? Hello? Oh, it's you. Yeah, I told you I would. I'm not whispering. Because it's two in the morning. Because my wife... What the fuck, Frank? Why are you calling me at the at my house? How'd you even get the call through at this... It's true at all. No, I'm not drunk. Yes, yes, I hear you. I got it. Tell Walls I have something even better. He's gonna love it. I just need a couple more weeks. I know, Frank. Two weeks aren't gonna hurt anybody. That's none of your business. How would they know? No, I haven't spoken to anyone. Are you trying to scare me? Don't try me, you fat fuck. I know what I'm doing. I've gotta go. Don't call me here again. Think you're so clever, huh? Oh god, I've got other plans, Frank. Where would I put those fucking matches? Need the number. Think, Walter, think. Bedroom. They'll be in my writing desk. Gonna bend you all over, bunch of greedy assholes. That's it. One call. No Wallace, no Chambers. No more dirty work. Only literature, honest to goodness literature. Suck it, Robert Penn Warren. But there'll be no turning back. These people are dangerous. Screw it. Dangerous or not, they're gonna make me rich. Dumb broad woke the baby up. You fat son of a... I told you not to call here, you fuck... Oh, honey. Sorry, I thought it was someone else. Yeah, everything's fine. I got home just fine. You okay? Can't sleep? Oh yeah? Miss you too, baby doll. What? She's not asleep, no. No, I haven't told her. I don't know. When the time is right. When the time is right, okay? Go to bed. Good night. I love you too. Bye. Wait, so is Walter responsible for the baby? Walter sighs. Is that what we're about to discover? Lord, I forgot to turn it off. Again. I've been listening to one of her lousy radio plays. I really wish she'd pick up a book. Loretta, are you out of your mind? Laura, you fall asleep in there? Open the door. Do you hear me? Open the door right now. <coughs> God, Loretta, what have you done? Do be careful with the china. You're sick, Loretta. Maybe so, but I'll be sick and thirty grand richer, and then I'll be long gone. Oh, you hear that? That'll be an important call from the publishing house, most likely. I'll be back in a moment. Should I kill the ginger bitch now? Maybe I should just let her go. What can she really do? Run crying to Bill? She's probably rolling around with him too. Who'd believe her? I won't be much more than a memory by the time anyone figures it out. Cuba? Tahita? Or Tahita? Tahiti? Hawaii? The world's gonna open up for you like you won't believe, Loretta. All you gotta do is make a choice. Aloha? Uh, I mean, hello. Mrs. Harris? We accept the offer. One of our guys is already on his way to you. Mr. Fitzgerald? 
Mr. Fitzgerald. He'll be in touch when he's in town. Marvelous. Oh, and Mrs. Harris? Please accept our deepest condolences on behalf of the Atlantic press team. We are extremely concerned and hope Mr. Harris will return soon. When I finally hung up, Margaret was nowhere to be found. Must have gotten scared. Wish I hadn't wasted my chicory root entertaining her. Either way, I had the manuscript. All I had to do was wait for Mr. Fis was wait for Fitzgerald. But of course something had to go wrong. Something I never would have expected. <coughs> Whoa. What? Am I trying to avoid the blood? Say something? No. We're nearly there. I think I saw a dead bird on the road. Turn the radio on or something. Turn the radio on or something. I ain't picking up any stations around here. Be patient. We're almost there. Is that your hip flask rattling around over there? Walter ignores and keeps driving. You know we're on the highway, right, Walter? Walter? Yep. Not another car in sight. Relax, okay? Maybe I should. Maybe I should drive for a while. No need. Like I said, we're almost there. Good. So I'm starting to get car sick from all the wheat fields. You and me both. happens now. So we gonna run a farm now like your folks did? Reckon there ain't much difference between cotton and wheat, huh? Please don't start. Then talk to me. How am I supposed to know what happens now? I don't have all the answers. You're not in the mood you're not in the mood today, I get that. But moving out here should do you some good. It'll do us both some good. You know what? Maybe we should just sit in shot in silence. You read my mind. Hand me that damn flask. Did I make it? Got no reason to leave the house. Not today. Always a window here? Yeah. Long suffering China. The cow broke my China. Well, it don't matter. Wait a little longer and I'll be able to buy myself another ten of these. Yeah, with your fucking thirty grand. Looks like that clock shut up for good. What a relief. There's no hands on it, though. Really? Again? I'm gonna sue that damn plumber. That 
noise is coming from the hole this time. But it's all boarded up. Can't pull them off with my bare hands. I think I saw an axe in the barn. Damn music. Why do they always gotta play some that same melody over and over and over? I don't hear anything. Oh, I kinda do now. Don't look over there. Just don't. This will do. Hope I don't get a splinter. Yeah, I think a splinter is <laughs> the least of your worries, Loretta. Oh. Oh, Lord. You scared me. What do you want? Hey, I'm talking to you. What are you staring at? Y'all shouldn't get, y'all shouldn't yell at old Jim Bob, ma'am. He's a mute. So what do you want? There's a little problem. Would y'all, would y'all take a look? Show me. God, what a smell. What, why is it here? Cattle's dying. I, I can see that. Maggot's already getting to work. It's Phillips. Storm must have scared him to death. So this one probably bolted in the night. Wandered over to your land. What's wrong with it? Is it sick? None too sure, I reckon. Harvest rotten, cattle dying. Witchcraft is what it is. That's crazy talk. Witchcraft? Well, taint right, Saul. Maybe it's the water. Don't you go drinking from the well, ma'am. I ain't. You got piping. What's gonna happen with the heifer? Smith's getting the rifle. That's what. Excuse me. Gonna haul her away to the truck tomorrow. In the truck tomorrow. Guess I'll head home then. A pair of hillbillies poking their noses round. Best put an end to that sooner rather than later. Uh, the hole, Loretta. The hole. Sooner I start. Sooner I'll finish. What's inside? Can't say a thing. The sound of brakes. Sounds like a car's pulled up in the driveway. Oh shit! Wipes his neck with a handkerchief. Got a very lovely house, ma'am. Don't bother. I can't stand this place either. Is this Mr. Harris's house? His parents. Ma'am, 
How long has Mr. Harris been gone for? Why don't you start off by telling me who it was that hired you? <clears throat> of course. I work for a firm called Wallace and Partners. Represent the interests of Mr. Wallace. Your husband. Owes Mr. Wallace a substantial sum of money, ma'am. Did Mr. Harris mention anything about that to you? No. But I've heard about Mr. Wallace. And I know he used to be a criminal. You may be right. But who can truly call themselves a saint in today's world? Mr. Wallace has paid back his debt to society and is now worthy enough to live in it. You know, he recently donated $30,000 for disabled war vets. If Wallace gives away his money so easily, then what does he want with, all, with my husband? We don't have any money. You're wasting your time. You have to understand, ma'am. We wish Walter no harm. We're old friends of his, and we want to help. Think about it. Would I really drive all the way across the country just to collect on some old debt? Mr. Wallace knows about Walter's money situation. See, he was supposed to pass on a particular item to us. An item that belongs to us. What are you talking about? Did Walter ever show, happen to show you a box? A box? Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. A wooden one with a lock on it. I don't know what you mean, mister. Why would he ever show me a box? Beads of sweat fall, on, fall from Mr. Chambers' face under his wrinkled shirt. Can I get you something to drink? Honestly, I was hoping you'd ask. Kitchen's just down the hall. Not gonna answer that? Hello, Mrs. Harris. I've been trying to reach you about this pa uh, read you this past couple of days. I've studied the archives, and it turns out there was once a cattle burial on your site, on your land. You know, for sick animals and such. The contagious kind. Contagious? Using the area for farming is actually prohibited by law. But I suspect Mr. Harris, and I, I mean your f husband's father, managed to skirt around that law somehow. And? Well, I'm no expert, ma'am. But I think the cat... But I think the cadaveric water is, must have reached the soil and poisoned the crops. So just sharing this information with Mr. Morgan. Drainage from the burial site will ruin his harvest too, most likely. But it ain't your fault. I see. Well, thank you. Did something happen? No, nothing important. Let's get into the kitchen. After you. Well, shit. Let me ask you, ma'am. Why did you move out here in the first place? Walter wanted to write his book. And did he? Yeah, he's working out he's working with the publishing house. With Mr. Schaefer, yes, I know. Mighty interesting, isn't it? First you move from New York, then Walter up and disappears. Maybe he was afraid you were coming. Maybe he was. Tell me, Mrs. Harris. Where do you think your husband might be? Got any ideas? He's in the well. Begging your pardon? Oh. Shit. took Chambers' car and put my foot on the gas. I was lucky he left his keys in the ignition. He also left something else in the glove box. Poor Chambers. Didn't even think he'd need his revolt. I was... Uh, oh my god, and then I saw it. A furious dance with hundreds of birds whirling in the sky. They call it a murmuration. Didn't think I'd ever get to see it. Truly hypnotizing. 
I had nowhere to run. Not like I have any gasoline anyway. Such a stupid, impulsive decision. I killed a stranger. And that dumb hillbilly saw me doing it. Would he tell anyone? Not that it'd make a difference. Apparently, I, per uh, or I thought I could be. I'm so sorry it turned out this way, Walt. But you can't force a river to flow backwards. There's no gluing together a broken cup. I just couldn't remember. But then I understood that I didn't really want to. Get up, Loretta. We've got a lot more work to do. Because I can't do it anymore. So that's it. We're done. Palm trees, pina coladas, young tan skin. Oh. We could end thing as they are. Well, it's your choice. What? What the fuck? The game closed. What? Did it crash? What the hell? <laughs> Tell me, Mrs. Harris. Where do you think your husband might be? Got any ideas? Maybe he went back to New York. He's got a sister there. Hmm. What was her name? Cynthia. I already spoke to her. Then maybe you passed him while you were on, on your way here. Walter could be halfway to New York by now. That certainly is possible. Sorry you had to come all this way for nothing, but I really don't think I can help. It's what I'm paid to do. Thanks again for the water. Sorry I bothered you. Now keep this in mind. We're not the only ones looking for Walter. There are people out there who only want to cause him and his family harm. I'm staying at the, at the Twin Oaks Motel. If Walter happens to show up, you be sure to call me. Here's my card. Your husband is in serious danger, but you and I can help him. Together. It's a moth. Bird. Mrs. Harris. Good morning. How are you today? How are you doing? Patrick Fitzgerald, at your service. I represent the legal interests of the Atlantic Press. We spoke on the phone. It's a pleasure to meet you. It's nice to meet you, too. Can I get you anything? No, thank you. Yes. I don't trust that vending machine food, either. Well, Mrs. Harris, I have to admit... That letter of yours was, um, unexpected. 
I hope you understand the scale of the trust my firm has in your husband. I was sent out here from Mississippi, you know. We expect Mr. Harris to reappear soon, of course. And then we'll all learn the secret of his mystical disappearance. But before that, I have a couple of questions. Remind me, what novel are we talking about here? You don't know. I do. But I like to be sure. The Straw Bull. Have you read it, by the way? Yes. And how'd you find it? It's his best work. A real page-turner. Fantastic. She realizes this is the first time she's seen a man with a manicure. In that case, I suggest we call it quits on the, on the coffee. You hand over the manuscript and I make some calls. We can get contracts written up. And you do have the manuscripts with you, right? That ain't gonna work, mister. No contracts? Not, no contracts. Not this time. Thought I made my point very clear in the letter. Your point. That's right. 30,000. Check is fine if you can't do cash. A check, huh? Listen, Fitzpatrick. Fitzgerald. If you want the novel, then you're gonna have to pay me. For a moment, a look of incan incandescent rage flashes across Fitzgerald's clean-shaven reptilian face. After a pause, his smile returns with a sparkle. Well, all right. We'll play your game. No contracts. I can even write that check for you right now. But I gotta see the manuscript first. Manuscripts at home, locked up in a safe. Fitzgerald takes a slurp of his coffee. Did you come here by car? This coffee is lousy. Yeah, I drove here. journey home usually took 25 to 30 minutes, but with Fitzgerald's high-speed motor, we got there in 15. Really put the pedal to the metal. Seemed quite comfortable doing it, like he was used to it. Couldn't make that man hush up for love or money. His lips were flapping the whole time. Talking about weather, sports, his work over in Mississippi, Louisiana, singing the praises of New Orleans cuisine. So, thirty grand. That's quite the pretty sum. I'd say it's fair. Looking at you, I get the impression your company ain't short on money. So long as folk want to keep reading about people sleeping with and murdering each other, then your husband, myself, and even you, we'll be set for life. No, it can't be. The safe's open. I don't get it. So, someone stole my manuscript. Oh, that's swell. Chambers. Well, Mrs. Harris, looks like we're done here. No! Wait! I know who stole it. I know where it is. I'll get it back. It's certainly an entertaining story, Loretta. You've given me quite the performance. It was an int intimidation act at first, but now you've evolved into Broadway. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if Mr. Harris jumped out from behind that curtain and sang us a tune next. No, please. You've already wasted too much of my time. I'm heading back to Mississippi, and I'll be sure to advise Mr. Schaefer away from any further dealings with you or your husband, wherever he may be. I'm begging you stay, in town just a little longer. I'll get you the manuscript. <sighs> I don't know what you're planning, but my boss is deeply interested in that book for some reason. I'll be leaving tomorrow at noon. Be sure to keep that in mind, so I won't be coming back again. We clear? Crystal, I'll bring the manuscript. I promise. Well then, all right then. Can I use your phone? Fog and rain again. I race down the slick road in a frenzy of rage, heading to the motel that Chambers had written on his business card. Fat-ass moron with rotten teeth. He must have stolen the manuscript when I was in the basement. But why? How could he have known the combination? 
Who is this Mr. Wallace he's working for? And why do they need my manuscript? The rain soon gave way to hail that fell so that fell so hard I considered stopping to chain the tree to chain the tires. I almost missed it as I struggled to keep the car on the road. A neon sign winked in the darkness. Twin Oaks. Here it is. I find Chambers, I find the manuscript. The porter ain't here. Lucky you, Loretta. Chambers ain't on the list. Must have used another name. Damn, but which one? Angel, I don't think that's... Two women sharing a moon room. Dolores Schiller. Too fancy. This one ain't even a man's name. Another woman's name. This one looks familiar. Charles F. Banks, Frank Chambers, bingo. It's an anagram. Oh yeah. Looks like he's in room 12. See a damn thing. Chambers lowered the blinds. Fence go through all the rooms. Chambers, you in there? Open up. It's locked. Of course it is. Come in handy. Bulky coffee machine. Paradise for roaches. Buy a newspaper. Hey, where's my newspaper? Come on, you dumb bucket of bolts. Give me my money back. Ma'am, can I help you with something? What happened? Ah, I think I lost my room key. I lost my room key. What's your last name? Mrs. Banks, room 12. Mr. Banks came alone. Who are you? Look. Oh, ma'am. I wish I could help, but your husband paid for the room fair and square. I can't give you the key. I'm sorry. Keys. Back. Lock behind go ass. Can't get to him from here. digging through the trash. Excuse me, ma'am. Room's for staff only. I need to find some way to distract the porter.
Room service? How may I help you? There's a fountain spouting out of my toilet. You gotta send someone to room five and fast. What in the... I'm on my way. Hopefully that'll distract him for a while. That did the trick. Won't be gone for long, though. Key to room 11. Better than nothing, I suppose. It's not the right room, but whatever. Gotta do what we're gonna do. What the hell are you doing, Loretta? Lucky the real Mrs. Mrs. Woodhouse ain't here. Jesus. I ain't, I ain't Amelia Earhart. By the time I got used to it. Protestant Bible. Put one of these in every room. I don't really believe in God, or rather, I don't want to, given all that's happened. I feel the air moving around my feet. Man, probably connects to room to chambers. Might be able to turn the screws if I had a coin or something. Damn it all. Had a coin. Empty. Damn it, we had a coin. Guess I can go in here. Ugh, it smells damp in here. Ugh. Yeah. Mike, Broaden Eleven's complaining about some stink in the ventilation. I think a rat might have died in there. Go check it out. Ah, there you are. Here we go. I swear this is the only time I'm doing it again. Chambers, you here? Suitcase is locked. Can't open it. Crumpled newspapers. I've seen these in detective movies. Put these down so they can hear people sneaking toward the bed. Who or what was Chambers afraid of? Oh my god! Oh, for the love of... This must be the murder weapon. Looks like someone slashed Chambers with a straight razor. Better not touch it. What a stench. How long has he been here? I think I'm gonna puke. Chamber's fat fingers look like bloody sausages. Looks like they're holding on to something. Oh, God. Key to the suitcase. Too old for this shit. <laughs> this ain't the time to fix my makeup. Yeah, no shit. 
Bad news, boss. Harris ain't here, just his wife. It's hard to say whether she's just acting a fool or if she's re if she really is one. Only thing I can say for sure is she's he's gone AWOL. This job ain't easy. Pigs are already making a mess of things. But I've got one last lead. Margaret Hatfield, a neighbor. The widow that Walter's been sleeping with. I'll pay her a visit tomorrow. But yeah, I think I'm being followed. I'll call again from a payphone later. It was clear from Chambers' strange telegram that neither he nor Mr. Wallace were interested in the manuscript. They were chasing down Walter for old unpaid debts. And it looks like Chambers had some of his own, too. Guess he'll never repay them now. Alright. Uh, let me just make sure that <laughs> I can continue right from there. I can. Cool. Okay. In that case, uh, I think that's probably a good place to wrap up. It's getting pretty late. Probably a nice, calm way to end things. All right. Well, anyway, if you're watching this over on YouTube at a later date, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're enjoying the series, leave a like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell so that you know when the next episode drops. Uh, or you can watch this live and support over at twitch.tv slash bigsliceGaming. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, if you would like to join the Discord, there is a link to it down in the description below. Um, if you are watching live and you would also like to join the Discord, you can use the command exclamation point Discord, and that would, that would bring up a link as well. Once again, if you're watching this over on YouTube, thank you guys again so much for watching, uh, and we'll see you in the next video.